Hi there, my name's Kerry, and I'm here to teach you some of the basics of Adobe Speedgrade CC. You may have already seen some of the videos that I did for Adobe Speedgrade CS6. Well, CC, which came out halfway through 2013, is a big improvement over Speedgrade CS6. And today I'm going to show you how easy it is to get your project from Premiere over to Speedgrade, colorize it, and then send it back to Premiere. And believe me, it is a lot quicker than what you may have seen before. So here we are in Premiere and I've created a short timeline of three clips. The first clip is a, uh, a coastal scene on the southern coast of New Zealand and you can see that it's uh, quite, a, quite a blue, cold clip. It's a little bit dreary. The second clip is uh, a couple of horses on the beach and it's um, actually shot quite nicely. There's a nice uh, gradient here in the skylines but maybe we want to warm that up a little bit when we get over to our colour post. And our third clip here is uh, one of the favourites I've used before. It's a seagull on the water. Now I'm going to make it a little bit trickier for myself here. I'm going to create a cross dissolve uh, between the first two clips. So I'm going to go over to the left here and go video transitions. And I'm going to go dissolve. And I want to get a cross dissolve. And I can drag that onto the gap between the two clips. And so now as I scrub the timeline over it, you can see the clips cross dissolving from one to the next. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to save that project and I'm going to go up here to the file menu and direct link to Adobe Speedgrade. This is the magic button. We're going to click that here and it's going to ask if I'd like to save the changes. Yes, we can save it again even though we just already did. And open in Adobe Speedgrade. Yes, we'll click yes because that is exactly what we want to do. So now it's going to close the project in Premiere, but it's going to leave Premiere running. Now you can close Premiere in the background if you want to give yourself a bit more memory, but uh, if you've got a reasonably uh, fast Mac or PC, it should be okay to run both programs at once. And you can see down in the dock in the bottom right corner, Speedgrade is now starting up. And it doesn't take very long to start up, and once it starts, it's going to load my project directly from the Premiere Pro project file. Now notice what's happened here. It hasn't rendered anything. There hasn't been any DPX files rendered out of Premiere. Uh, I haven't had to create new files or folders. It is opening up the project file exactly as it was in Premiere Pro. So you can see here we are in Speedgrade and it has now opened the project. You can see here on the Speedgrade timeline I've got the three clips. And have a look here in the middle. It's actually got the cross dissolve listed as a cross dissolve effect, just like you'd see in Premiere Pro. No longer do we have to have the dissolve as a separate clip within Speedgrade. We are just going to be working with these three clips and we don't even have to worry about the dissolve. It's going to take care of it, which is just fantastic. So we're going to move to our first clip here and I'll drag the timeline along. Uh, you can see the interface is a little bit different from before, but it's actually a lot better this way. It's quite familiar to people who have been using Speedgrade CS6, and it just makes subtle improvements that really helps the workflow. You'll notice one thing as well when you move directly from Premiere Pro over to Speedgrade in the, uh, in the method that we did just a second ago. There is some functionality that it doesn't let you use because of the way that you're dealing with Dynamic Link. If you did need to do every single function that, Prem uh, that uh, Speedgrade had available to you, you could always render out your clips and open it separately in Speedgrade. But for now, we just want to do a simple color effect. So let's get started. I'm going to go here and I'm just going to make a real rush job of it. I'm going to take this and warm it up quite a lot by dragging it all towards the yellow. And you can see in the top right monitor, is it making any difference? Might be my slow computer here. There we go. It's caught up with itself. It is quite yellow. That might be not as much as what we want. Let's just bring that back a little bit. And remember that you can right click on the little crosshairs in the middle of the circle wheel. You just right click once and then you can move the mouse around without having to hold down the mouse button. And that's the equivalent to having a, uh, a dial control on a proper color correction surface. Now this is this is quite ugly. I'm, uh, I'm not really happy with that but in the interest of demonstration I'm just going to leave it there uh, so you can see how the workflow moves between the two programs. Let's move to our second clip. It's the, uh, the people on the beach. Maybe we want to brighten that up a little bit so I'm going to drag the gamma up here and again my computer will take a second to catch up because I'm running a couple of programs and the screen recorder at the same time. 
you can see there it's a little bit brighter and maybe we want to um, make it look a little bit colder so I'm going to take the blues and increase over to the blue here and in the interest of demonstration we'll leave that there now of course remember as you could before if you have a keyboard with a number pad on it if you hold down the zero key on the number pad you'll see how the clip looked beforehand and then you can release the number pad you'll see how it looks with the effect applied to it finally let's go to our third clip here the seagull and what shall we do to this one well there's a number of uh, looks that we can use uh, that are built into speed grade maybe we should apply a look so I'll click the button here to bring up all our different looks we might want to go down to a black and white clip so I can click on that um, that look there now and it will make this eagle in black and white I can click this button here and reduce the size of that look window so that my controls are still available so there we go I've got three clips that I've just done the color effects for Obviously, if I was actually trying to make it look decent, I would have spent much more time with much more care and compassion to make these clips look good. But in the meantime, we have done our three clips. And notice I haven't touched the cross dissolve at all. Okay, watch what happens next. Up here in the top left corner, you've got a few options. One of them is to save the current project, if you just want to save it and keep working. You can save the current project as, if you wanted to rename it. But this button here is the most important one, and it's the one we're going to use now. And that is direct link to Adobe Premiere Pro. So we're going to click that button and it's going to say, would you like to save the changes to the Premiere project file? You can see it's got the PRP ROJ extension, quite a long extension, and open in Premiere Pro. Yes, we'll click yes because that is what we want to do. So SpeedGrade will save the project. It will leave SpeedGrade running, which you may not want to do because you may want to save some of the RAM. And here we are again. It's back open in Premiere Pro. We had Premiere Pro running, so it was very quick to launch. And the project has opened up. And we still have our three clips on the timeline. But now you can see clip one has that awful 1970s orange effect that we applied on it. Clip two, uh, the horses on the coastline is blue, just like we wanted. And clip three is in black and white, just like we expected. Well, how did it do this? We didn't have to render anything out of speed grade. We didn't have to render anything into speed grade. What's the secret? Well, let's click on our seagull clip here. And then up in the top left corner, if you go effect controls, and you'll see that uh, Lemetri is the effect that we're working with here. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Lemetri is the effect that speed grade will give the clip to give it its, its look, its color controls. And we can see that this is what's being used because if you click the FX button here at the left to toggle the effect off, you can see that the seagull goes back to full color. We'll click it again and the seagull's in black and white. So this effect is what speed grade is applying on a clip by clip basis. If you click this button here, uh, you can see that you can actually load your own custom look effect. So you might have saved a preset and just made that preset once in speed grade you can then go and apply that to as many clips as you want without even having to open speed grade and now this is one of my favorite features and it saves me a lot of time compared to how it used to be done before if i scrub the timeline between clip one and clip two you can see as we go through the cross dissolve the color effect is kept on both clips and that's because the color effect is being applied under the effects controls through the Lemetri color engine. I didn't have to go and render the cross dissolve separately and I didn't have to worry about syncing everything up back in the right order. It has just done it by magic. And of course, if I wanted to lose just one color effect, maybe I wanted to get rid of that blue. I could turn that off, take it back as it was, and my first clip is still in that ugly effect and my third clip is still black and white, but the second one has been adjusted back to normal. And so you can see how easy that was by just going to the file menu and using the uh, direct link to Adobe SpeedGrade I can bounce the project back and forward between Premiere Pro and Adobe SpeedGrade it really is amazing and I look forward to joining you on my next video where we'll look at some more functions with Adobe SpeedGrade CC